Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Let me uh, drag this down into place here. I want to take a look at um, a Bible verse here. And uh, it's, it's really a simple lesson as to what the world, what the earth, what the people of the earth should do to prevent any coming disaster, really. Any disaster is preventable. God created the earth. He can stop any disaster. We have this uh, article. This is from uh, Zerhedge. Dot com. NASA unveils plan to stop Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. There's just one catch. So let's look at it, and then I want to look at Second Chronicles 7.14. A NASA plan to stop the Yellowstone supervolcano from erupting could actually cause it to blow, triggering a nuclear winter that would wipe out humanity. Uh, scientists... Um, at NASA have now come up with an incredibly risky plan to save the United States from the supervolcano. So this is the first I heard of um, them coming up with a plan to uh, save it, which means uh, they know that it's going to cause absolute disaster. And NASA scientists have spoken out about the true threat of supervolcanoes and the risky methods uh, that could be used to prevent uh, a disaster, uh, devastating eruption lying beneath the tranquil and beautiful settings in Na Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. as an enormous magma chamber called a caldera. It's responsible for the geysers. Brian Wilcox, a former member of NASA's uh, Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, <clears throat> shared a report on the natural hazard that has uh, that hadn't been that hadn't seen the outside of the agency until now. Um, following the, an article published by BBC uh, about supervolcanoes last month, NASA researchers got in touch with the media to share a report previously unseen uh, outside the agency. So they're revealing they're trying to, to lower the worry by citizens because apparently they see people uh, on YouTube and on, on the interwebs getting uh, nervous and uh, p putting all sorts of conspiracy theories out there about super volcanoes and the end of the world. So they're trying to calm uh, people's nerves. I was a member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied ways for NASA <coughs> to defend from planet asteroids and comets. That's uh, so Brian Wilcox. I came to the conclusion that uh, during the study that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than an, than the asteroid or comet threat. Absolutely. I don't think there's going to be a, a comet uh, falling on the Earth that's going to uh, cause an end to mankind. God's going to um, destroy the Earth with fire and brimstone in the last days. And that's what it says. It doesn't say that an asteroid is going to come. And uh, I read the end of the Bible, like I said. It tells you how the uh, end of civilization is going to come. Yellowstone is cur currently leaks 60 to 70 percent of its heat into the atmosphere through steam, uh, uh, water basically, water coming out of the, the magma, uh, boiling the water and the steam coming out. And so the, the tr transfer of the uh, heat of the volcano to the atmosphere is about 60 to 70 percent. So Wilcox hypothesized that if enough heat was removed and the temperature of the supervolcano dropped, it would never erupt. But he wants to see a 35 percent decrease in the temperature. And how to achieve that is incredibly risky. So uh, they were talking about putting an aqueduct um, up there and pump water into it. That would be hugely expensive, uh, over $3 billion to uh, do this sort of thing. And that would be a waste of time. But they came up with another plan, and they want to drill, just like, uh, I guess, uh, what is it, uh, Finland or Norway um, maybe does with, uh, no, Iceland, I think, is one the place I'm thinking of, where they drill into... Um, and the uh, you know the volcano the magma the the geothermal activity uh, pipe water in and uh, it heats up the water transferring the energy transferring the heat and then they make electricity from it. So NASA is saying um, they could drill up <clears throat> uh, down to ten kilometers and pump water at high pressure. The circulating water would return at a temperature of around three hundred and fifty degrees Celsius. Uh, thus slowly day by day uh, extracting heat from the supervolcano. And while such a project will come at an estimated $3.46 billion, it comes with an enticing catch that would convince politicians and the population. Uh, they can make money off this. Money is what makes the world go around. So it is an interesting. Yellowstone currently leaks around 6 gigawatts in heat. Um, so through drilling this way, it could uh, create a geothermal plant which generates electric, uh, electric power at an extremely competitive prices around uh, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, you would have to give the geothermal companies incentive to drill somewhat deeper 
and use hotter water uh, than they usually would, but you would uh, pay back your initial investment and get electricity, which can power the surrounding area for a period potentially of tens of thousands of years. Of course, drilling into a supervolcano comes with its own risk, like the eruption that scientists are de desperate to prevent. Triggering an eruption by drilling would be disastrous. The most important thing to do thing with this is to do no harm, Wilcox says. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to cool it from there, that would be very risky. Um, this could make the cap uh, over the magma more brittle and prone to fracture. If you cool it down, it's going to be more brittle, right? And might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases. So we might bring the, uh, about the end of civilization ourselves just by drilling into this thing. Even though we know, um, <clears throat> well... It's going to erupt at some time, and I think God's going to use it to uh, destroy the world with fire and brimstone at, at some point. The cooling of Yellowstone in this manner would also take tens of thousands of years, but it is a plan that scientists at NASA are considering for every supervolcano on Earth. What man always does is they always try to resolve uh, things with their own methods, with science, with, science and with, with hardware, with their own ingenuity. But the Bible says something different on the subject about saving humanity. Let's read. This is uh, BibleHub.com, and uh, apparently this didn't finish loading. Second Chronicles 7. <clears throat> and uh, let me find the verse here. Uh, where was... Go back here. Uh, Second Chronicles 7.14. Yes, okay. So let's go to 7.14. Go to reader mode here, and let's see what God has to say about what man should do to prevent disaster coming. And so, uh, Second Chronicles says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek the face of God from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. So I think the answer is simple. You want the solution to global warming, so-called global warming? You want the solution to super volcano? You want the solution to terrorism. You want the solution to uh, the violence in the land and everywhere around the planet. You want the solution to the economy. Verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal, heal their land. And then he can bless us again. Uh, if, if we uh, repent, if we turn to God, He will absolutely bless us. And in the Bible, it's shown so many times: if a, if, a, if a nation, if a people, turn away from evil, turn to God, they are blessed. They have peace. They have safety. Um, they uh, have abundance. Um, they will basically um, start heading towards what we uh, will eventually see, and uh, that is uh, living in paradise again. <clears throat> If all and all we need to do, like I say, is follow Jesus Christ, uh, rep return to Him, repent of our sin, and He will heal our land. So the solution to everything is not man, is not science, is not building new things, is not spending money, is not creating taxes to overcome, you know, our carbon footprint and uh, to offset uh, the global warming. It's not in chemicals. It's not in uh, drilling. It's not in making money. If we want to see prosperity, peace, and, uh, and, and abundance, we just need to return to the Lord, uh, repent, and turn around, do a, a 180, and uh, start doing what God says. So uh, NASA's plan is very short-sighted. It's only a, a Band-Aid, and it's not a solution. Return to the Lord is the solution. So I will leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. A little bit of uh, almost a devotional, a little quick Bible teaching about... Uh, today's news events and you can pretty much apply this verse everywhere so thanks for watching guys a little uh, a bonus for for sunday um and we'll see you guys in the next video